Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host, Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to do a generic gallery on the brute keyword, as well as answer some listener questions. Uh, a lot of team ability related questions this week, and I'm excited to get into those. Anyways, this is episode 376. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional. Hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how they six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not richer nonsense. I'm gonna make your clips like that forever. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Okay, Google, the back some Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. ILH for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Join me, like always, in the studio is. Hero Clicks, your dial for Hero Clicks champion, the Billion Clicks Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Yeah, I'm no sexy range hand, but uh, what I lack in that, I make up for in uh, sugar daddy <laughs> capabilities. I, oh, I didn't like that at all. No, no, <laughs> that is not. Yikes. Yikes. Uh, is that well, not? Any, no, no. Uh, <laughs> any, uh, any, I um, thought that was my new tagline. Any ladies out there that Simeon, <laughs> I can't even say it. I can't even, I can't even. I can't even. No, no. Yeah, freaking big yikes, bro. <laughs> big yikes. Uh, all right. What? Uh, uh, what made you happy this week? Oh, wow. you know what makes me happy every Jeez. week is just making Gosh, Calder wow. super uncomfortable all the time. Um. But no, I, I, uh, this week I, I had some good food. I had some momos, which I, I love. I've talked about momos on the podcast before. I really like my momos. Uh, I had some butter brickle ice cream, which is really good. Um, and then on top of that, I'm just, uh, I'm in process of getting like my house reorganized. So, um, got some headway on that between yesterday and today gotten a little bit of that work done and uh it's it's coming together it's a slow process okay right on man it's uh it's some good stuff uh, what made me happy this week was went to a rodeo the other day it was a good time it, uh cheese went went a bit long for a sunday perf in my opinion but besides that it was pretty good and it was a local one to the area i'm in now so i wasn't expecting to see anybody uh, from my hometown there, since there was also a rodeo the same weekend at hometown. So I figured pretty much everybody would be there. But no, it was pretty cool. I got to see. I believe there's one girl there who was uh, from Kennebec. So that was pretty cool. And she won uh, Women's Breakaway, which was great. Uh, plus, I went with a friend who I could uh, explain how all the rodeo events work to, which was kind of cool. Because uh, normally, I don't know the most about it. But in this case, I, I did is pretty cool normally it's like uh sitting with my family and like listening to them just chatter off about stuff as you get sort of bored when the cool events are over and it's like barrel racing or something but then even when like the lame events like goat tying or something pop up you can uh you can still sort of explain to people how they work just because it's fun to teach people stuff um sorry to anybody that enjoys those events but they are awful uh and incredibly boring <laughs> If you've been to a rodeo uh, and you think barrels are interesting, I will agree. Barrels can be interesting. Not interesting is when they have to uh, bring the tractor around every four or five barrel racers and retill the entire arena or at least the areas around the barrels. Um, that just sucks and I hate it. And it just makes it take forever. I just want. But yeah, that's what made me happy. I think added to that event should be like one it's like who who truly goes fast Let, let's let's I, really put these horses to the test i, like, I honestly don't know uh making the the turn on the dirt bike might make him biff it honestly oh, you yeah. have more control with the I horse mean, like absolutely when i was 14 i definitely would have just like trashed it i would have just like yeah rolled like head over but I also never competed for that kind of. Thing. There could be like one real test. You trained, thing. yeah. If you were trained here, for it, we do. Man. We do one BMX like pro, like dirt bike, like not motorized, just like 
pedal bike pro. A pedal? Oh, there's no way. There's no way anyone on a pedal bike can go faster. No than I've seen those horse. guys go like 60 feet in the air. There's definitely a way. I've never seen a horse go 60 feet in the air. So yeah, there you go. You got me you on. Can't take you a horse off a ramp. One. See? See? Uh, that is true. Yeah, you're right. No, you're right. Uh, all right. Well, uh, it's pretty light for news this week. Just uh. Just rise and fall pre-release Simeon. Any any wacky? Obviously, we uploaded a mock sealed pre-release uh, unboxing, team building, whatever. You had to see into our scary minds about how we how we build teams, how we look at our boosters. But Simeon, you Absolutely. were able to play in a real uh, pre-release. What uh, would you pull? Would you play? What do you think of the set and sealed? I know we sort of talked about it in the video, but how was that pre-release experience for you, man? So I yeah. I, um... Krypton Comics here in Omaha is reopened ish. Um, for the most part, they're they're doing events again, and yeah, I pulled very similar to what I did in the video. So um, at Krypton, I pulled my I was it was another double rare pack. So I pulled Exodus, and um, in the video with Calder, I pulled Lalandra, but. It, at Krypton, I pulled Exodus, and oh, it was good, good content. I didn't end up playing it, that's why I forgot. Sure, I'm glad we spent all that time see. on someone you didn't end up playing. <laughs> Makes me very happy. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, my my two pulls, my two rares were Beautiful. Exodus and Hepsiba. Um, I didn't end up playing Hepsiba because did not actually. Hepsiba does have the X-Men keyword, but um, I don't know why I didn't end up playing that. That's strange. Um, but yeah, I Who also pulled Sebastian do do. Shaw. Um, Sebastian Shaw, X-23. Uh, let's see. X-23 combined uh, Pew Pew guy. <laughs> Havoc. Jeez. Yes. Oh, does he go Pew Pew? Yeah. He was more like a reverb. Rah, 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 like, not really a Pew. Oh. Noise. You think it's like one big like, like yeah, something like that, right? It's this, yeah, yeah, uh, possibly, quite possibly. So, um, you're saying my team was okay. It was very okay, uh, despite our review of the set show, our three hour review of the set show, completely just bashing Sebastian Shaw, saying how like this is a bad play, this is a bad figure. It's a lot of points. Your opponent can just ignore it. Blah blah blah. Um, I lost my first game. My first game quite handily. Um, it was against Jackson, who pulled a Prime Omega Red uh, that has char- like traded Charge Flurry, Giant Reach of Three, or not Charge, um, but has Special Power Charge, Sidestep Plasticity, traded Giant Reach Three Flurry. When Omega Red hits, all hit characters modify attack and damage minus one until your next turn. Stop combat reflexes, uh, bottom dial, uh, steel energy. My plan was just to wipe him with Exodus. It took me way too many turns to like get to that kind of point, and he oh. tied me down. So like, what I should have done was sunk um, like a Havoc attack. Because Havoc is a 11 for 3. I should have shot... Um, I should have just like focused my whole team on this Prime Omega Red. Because Havoc could have shot him down to click 3. And then um, I could have followed up with a attack from X-23 while he's still on toughness. And then once he gets hit to either Combat Reflexes or a special stop click, I could have used my... Um, Exodus to a running shot and mind control get rid of him that way. Um but yeah, that was that was a real pain. Uh I ended up losing because of Sebastian Shaw and Exodus. So I didn't play Exodus very forward, but I played Sebastian Shaw forward, which was a bad idea because Exodus can be brought back by Sebastian Shaw, but yeah. Sebastian Shaw cannot be brought it. back by Exodus. And right. so Sebastian Shaw was killed. But uh yeah, Jackson ended up winning by 370 points to zero. Um, of course, in tournament ranking, he just only gets the 300. But yeah, good Ooh. old Krakoan Revival really, really Ow, did me really, 
Um, my next game was against the Super Rare Apocalypse at full points, Crap. so 125 points with the Impervious and Leadership Outwit. So this go around, I realized, oh, like for one, uh, point one, my opponent rolled horribly. Four crit misses yeah. in a single game. One of those Ooh. crit misses got yeah. probed, but then I took out the prob, and so the rest of the crit misses had no prob. Uh, Tempo was also on this team. Um, the best You're part is Tempo. So Tempo has that uh, probability control. Adjacent opposing characters can't use super senses, and then the trait where it's uh, free: choose an opposing or choose an adjacent character, modify its speed either plus three or minus three until your next turn. So yeah. that trait did kick off once, and then the special damage power that gets rid of super senses also kicked off once. I think it got rid of my uh, would have been X twenty threes, I believe. Yeah. X-23 super senses at one point. So ahead in points by uh, Krakoan Revival and some other stuff. But then I uh, Tempo charged in after probbing an attack, charged in to attack somebody, and crit missed, putting Tempo on click two. And then I used Exodus to mind control and just delete Tempo off the, the four damage that super sense doesn't work through, which was fun. And then, uh, yeah, after that, uh, between the, th the three other crit misses, I can't remember everything on the team, but it was, yeah, it was those two and then just other random jank. But uh, full point apocalypse is really scary if you don't have either pen damage or um, Exodus on your team. Because Exodus was real cool with just straight up, like, deleting through his dial really fast oh yeah uh, it's not pen damage but um yeah like going through impervious couple clicks at a time and then his lower dial is invuln and mastermind and you can't mastermind exodus's damage which is like another mm -hmm. really cool thing Ouch, because, rip. yeah so that was like a really fun game and then uh after that i i left because uh i was just real tired and it was a Thursday night after I had started work at uh, 6 a.m., waking up at 5, and it was about 9 p.m., and so I was just ready to be done. But yeah, it was it was a really good time. We saw some really fun pulls. Um, I did manage to hit a Herbert Blackheart Wyndham to click, uh, let's see, to click 5. Almost killed a Herbert Blackheart Ooh, Wyndham. okay. There you um, go. Because... Uh, Herbert Blackheart Wyndham the Chase uh, takes a max of one damage from attacks. Can't be healed. Can't be chosen for Mastermind. Protected Pulse Wave. So Exodus is able to just deal out four full damage. But I All was right. one short. And the other thing that Herbert does is can use standard powers printed on his card for lower click numbers. So on click five... Mm. He now has access to every other power on his card, which was uh, Smoke you, Cloud, you, Quake, Poison. You made him full power. Incapacitate, Blades, Toughness, Barrier, Super Senses, Energy Seal, Deflection, Combat Reflexes. So just straight up a 19 defense bottom dial now. Uh, probability Control, Outwit, Enhancement, Empower, and Close Combat Expert. So also a... 12 for 3 at close with an outwit, a prob, the ability to boost damage, both range and close. like Just all the stuff. And uh, then I did not manage to hit him again. So, yeah. That was a real bad idea. Like, I realized afterwards like I probably could have just ignored him. But I really wanted to get rid of the prob. And then I realized I just made the prob a lot worse because he can use yeah. any uh, still... click. Mm. Plus, the uh, improved targeting, elevated hindering in characters meant you could, like, body block Herbert in while still using the prob and all the other stuff. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was it was a fun sealed. Ow. The thing I really realized about the sealed was I didn't pull any super rares. But I still really managed to hold my own with, like, the two, well... I only played one rare, but with the rares and the commons and uncommons, the like random kind of stuff, I was able to hold my own and do some interesting stuff. 
Um, I think the rare that I did pull is probably good enough to be like on par with a lot of the super rares, so that helps. But uh, no, I had a lot of fun with that sealed. I think it was a a good set to play sealed in. Right on. All right, well, sweet. Uh, like I said, it's sort of the show, guys. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get into a generic gallery. Why should you care? Keywords. 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 So why should you care? Keywords. It's only a game. Why do you have to be mad? Celebrity, police, past, and scientist, assassin, soldier, spy, tinker, tailor. No, they, they're not in there, but, you know, you get it. So, Simeon. Yeah, we've done quite a few generic keywords here so far. Pirate, politician, future, soldier, animal. Uh, probably some other ones that I don't remember. Uh, this week, we are, however, doing the brute keyword. Yeah. Always, uh, I'm going to be building a 300 modern team. Or, I mean, we take turns, but one of us is 300 modern. One of us is going to be a 400 or who knows what, something, something casual, Silver Age or Golden Age theme team. Uh, we're just building out of the, the brute keyword. Uh, and of course, mixed in. Normally, we have a hidden gem or a, a value corner, but those those will pop up, you know, pop up somewhere in there as we go. So, for my uh, for my uh, brute team here, three hundred points. It's modern. Uh, I'm gonna be running Doctor Thing, uh, who of course wow. is uh, one of the many faces of Doom. Wow. So this is sort of pseudo cheating. I do, however, like what he does. I think he might some one of these years he might see play. I think he's not bad to start with, honestly. Uh, so to be fair, yeah. I think Lord Doom keyword because of like his dial. Uh, not Probably. necessarily saying that the character deserves the brute keyword, but like his dial is very brutish. It is, it's charged but doesn't have speed. With exploit I feel the full like dial, like it's just you his know. dial would be more assassiny. Okay, we'll charge exploit. I mean that's fair too. You know but, what I mean? Okay, but yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't have any of those keywords. Like I mean, that, that is also true. Know. He doesn't have that one either. It is weird. Armor he, celebrity, he, he celebrity, seems very celebrity brutal. one's kind of strange. Force ish. Yeah. Yeah. Do not know the character at all. Uh, yeah, I, I saw the one either. comic panel. And that was an mm -hmm. this is enough. I'm satisfied. No, but so Dr. Thing, what what is his like when revealing forces thing? So when revealing forces, this isn't at the beginning of the game. So you get to do this uh, before anything else, before you choose. However, it only works if he's on the map. Right. So when revealing forces, choose an opposing sideline game element. If Dr. Thing is on his starting click, the chosen sideline game element can't be brought into the game. So that's really cool. It sadly doesn't work against Jason. Because uh, you're not bringing in that character, you're bringing their pog, their bystander they generate. So instead, if this is basically just a trouble alert or an ID call in slash a sentinel, I guess would also be it. You do like um, a Wonder Woman object as well, right? Oh yeah, a Wonder Woman object. Yeah, choose an opposing sideline game element. Uh, well, those are from outside the game the oh, objects. Okay. Uh, you could, however, choose a Wonder Woman. One of the shifting focus Wonder Woman, you know, shifting focus stops them from coming in. So if you never want the in cap or big defensey Wonder Woman to ever come in, you can do that. So that is kind of neat. Um, so I think that is at least cool because this is a unrevealing forces. So you can only ever use this guy if you start on your team with him. So I think that's like the one bonus for starting. He also has plasticity uh, sidestep with a special power that he can be free place thing adjacent to an opposing character that attacked Dr. Thing since your last turn. They don't have to hit, they don't have to damage you, just attacked you. That's kind of cool. And then he has a special defense power on his first two clicks, which means, uh, which is invincible, and he takes a maximum of one damage from range attacks, which is kind of neat. You know, so I like it. There's no protected outwit on this guy, though, which is a little rough. He does have a 19 defense, which is kind of cool. Um, but nine times out of ten, probably going to get swapped in a competitive game to all caps, doom so we can just make sure they only take three actions per turn uh, i only, only went this far into doctor thing because it's not many people probably know what he does um and yeah air horn that says D -d 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 yeah you're right uh next up because i saw him and he had the brute keyword sky tyrant we know what he does he's got full full speed charge flurry 
Um, when he kills people, he gets a resurrection token. He's got Outwit, which is also super cool. So Sky Tyrant is just kind of good. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of a theme with this team. So if we swap out Doctor Thing for uh, Lord Doom, you're gonna you're gonna notice a theme. So we got Sky Tyrant, uh, we got Doctor Thing, maybe Lord Doom, maybe All Caps Doom. Probably the two we're gonna go with. Uh, Power Gem, of course. Sky Tyrant, you know, potentially equip that. And by potentially, uh, because we have no sidestep um, on the team, unless we get really lucky. I have included three Friends of Humanity at five points because uh, I'm a gambler. Got a uh, uh, a two out of six chance to get sidestep when you're rolling for these guys for five points. So it's a big maybe. Um, if not, you can always pay ten points for one to guarantee sidestep if you want to, you know, and then just have either not another one and just have some other object or a five point uh you know man i don't know or something mansion ring yeah map you do bonus, mansion ring you do a map bonus whatever stuff like that i don't know your life um so there's there's them and then uh, i've included a hundred point uh a big bruiser here i think he's cool he doesn't see enough play in my opinion he is cool uh house of x juggernaut with the brute keyword Ooh, yeah. uh does a lot of stuff. Protected Outwit can reduce penetrating damage. He's got Colossal Stamina. He is also an 11 speed, 11 attack, 4 damage. He's got a stop click on the end, which is impervious. Succeeds on a 4 through 6. He also has Battle Fury, his whole dial. And opposing characters in 4 squares can't use Stop, Leadership, or Perplex. And uh, if they already use Perplex, the modifier does not apply. So I really like that as well. And then uh, he also has a uh, Charge. I'm going to use it. Uh, you can choose to not have a speed value, and you can use improved movement characters, and can move in a direct path. If Juggernaut uses charge during your last turn, he can't become immobile. I don't know how often that's going to come up. And then he also has normal improved movement for hindering, and then going through blocking terrain and destroying it uh, after resolutions, which I also really, really like. So with Lord Doom, if we swap to Lord Doom, we get all full square charge, destroy blocking, Sky Tyrant, full square charge, no destroy blocking, flight. Uh, and then with Juggernaut, we have full square charge, destroys blocking. So my last figure, who I'm going to call a hidden gem, and to be fair, you could use either version of this guy if you want. Uh, I think this one fits the best for this team. He uh, fills out what we're missing and is, believe it or not, the cheapest way to get this power on a brute team that I saw, besides, of course, it being a theme team. Uh, but that is the Minotaur from the Captain America and the Avengers set. The Minotaur is, like, never, ever seen competitive play at all he's 50 points he's four clicks he's got no stop click it's not the greatest play but uh when he starts the game you can choose one prop control or the mystics team ability and then minotaur can use the chosen power or ability for the rest of the game so i really like that for uh you know and if you want to choose mystics it's a bit of a different play but i just like the idea of having a prob he also has a full speed charge if he moves in a direct path then he also gets destroys blocking. So my goal being a plus three, six, seven, plus seven, not great uh, to win map here, but would be to put you on something like a King's Tomb, maybe more along the lines of a uh, Ancient Hold, and then really use our full square charges, destroying blocking terrain uh, to our advantage, which I just think is, is a ton of fun. Uh, and also when he destroys through blocking terrain, uh, for each two squares he moves, he has a nine speed. He modifies his attack value plus one. So, you know, yeah. he, he can get all the way up to a plus three, be a 14 for three. He's got blades, battle fury. I like the amount of battle fury on this team. And then they also is a, a fair mix of penetrating damage thanks to Sky Tyrant and, of course, Lord Doom. So, sadly, we weren't able to get somebody who has both battle fury and pen damage, but we got one or the other. Which I can't totally complain about, you know. And of course, Power Gem does not have to go on Sky Tyrant. You can put that, you can slap that on anybody you want. Um, and also, I'd say a mini side tangent here for Hidden Gem. If you want to, you can put the other Minotaur uh, also on the team. He is also 50 points. He's also a brute. This is the rare Minotaur. Uh, the big thing he does, instead of being your prob control, and then instead of having a full square charge, full reach charge, this guy has... This game, opposing characters can't use location bonus effects. They can use the consolation bonus instead. I originally had him on the team. I don't know if that's better than just at least having prob and then another full square attacker. You know, there's not a lot of people that can uh, 
support a brute team. Brute is just kind of the heavy hitter guy, you know, so there's not a ton of support for brute out there. Um, but yeah, like if you want to, you could do this. If you feel like you're going to see a lot of location bonuses, then, you know, go for it. Cause some, some there can are, make or break teams. There like, are a few uh, very in, uh, that are better. Some constellations are better. That is true. I think, uh, yeah, I think definitely Laverian Village really sucks if you have this guy because it's like, oh, I just get one useless peasant who doesn't have mash mine or whatever. And then, you know, I, uh, there's, there's quite a few things that are bad, but there's, you're right, there's a lot of constellations that are good. So this guy, he also has Battle Fury. He also has Charge and he can also uh, move through blocking terrain. He just does not have a full square charge, which is kind of what tipped the Minotaur, the 50 point Minotaur, over, in my opinion. Plus, the prob is just really good because, sure, you have three theme probs, but as I have very much learned these last few days, uh, man, three theme probs <laughs> just is not enough. It's definitely yeah, good to have a normal that, on dial yeah. prob. But uh, yeah, that is that is my brute team. Yeah, that so that Minotaur, he also can be a. Uh, plus three attack although he starts with only a, a 10 um, if he moves through at least three pieces of blocking terrain he modifies attack and damage plus one so he could be a 13 for six which is real solid uh, being able to self-modify yeah, on the right very map. True. all right so my team uh we went with a i went with a strictly silver age so not only not dipping into the Golden Age, the pre-Joker's uh, Wild Superior Foes stuff, but also not dipping into anything modern for this specific build. And so for this one, I kind of... So uh, I should say uh, this is a 400-point build. So 400-point silver. Um, you'll notice a couple characters that, of course, like have been used before, but they're just... Uh, and then there's going to be a few in here that I feel like are pretty decent. Um, so... I'll leave the I'll leave the quote unquote best for last. Uh, so there's not a lot of support powers with the brute keyword. There's not a lot of like taxis or anything like that. So you need people that are self sufficient. And so I started the team off with the mighty Thor fast forces 106 Hulk for 50 points. Now, if you've never seen this Hulk, one of the few characters that is infinitely better at half points i shouldn't even say that because that's not quite true but he's just so much better at half points than he is at full um because he's way slower at full so at 100 points this hulk starts with a six speed leap climb nine attack 17 defense three damage for half the points he starts at a 10 speed 12 attack 18 defense for four damage so not a single one of those stats is lower than his top dial. It's I mean, the top two stats, speed and attack, are both three plus, like, better. And then his defense and damage are both increased by one. Uh, his big thing that he was used for is when he moves after actions resolve, he can use Quake at no cost. Not nearly as good as it used to be because he can't single target Quake for his full damage. But... He can still have that 12 attack with knockback attack like a group of people. He's still really good. And then if he survives for 50 points, he's still a 12 for 4. Um, he's just a really solid piece. Also, he has Avengers, so it's technically an 11 speed. Um, but yeah, I, I really like this Hulk. I've used him on plenty of teams before. He's a really fun piece. Uh, it should be fairly cheap to pick up now. Uh, who knows, I guess, but... Still really fun. Um, next up on the team is from Secret Wars Battle World, the Uncommon Maestro. So this guy's got a ton of stuff going on. He has improved movement, elevated, and hindering, which hindering doesn't matter anymore. But elevated, at least, is still pretty important. Um, for 100 points, he has the Baron of Battle World trait, which gives him leadership perplex. And when he uses Perplex to target another character, you can instead modify a combat value except damage plus two if the target shares a Battle World keyword. He has Battle World Other. No one else on this team is going to have that keyword. So it's just going to be normal leadership Perplex, which is fine. He has a, another trait that is I am inevitable. In inevitable. Inevitable. Is that, is that, is that it? Thanos. I am mm. Thanos. Uh, steel energy is what that trait gives him. <laughs> Inevitable, wow. not a vegetable. Um, 
He has a special speed power. I'm coming for you. Charge. Improved movement. This character can move through blocking terrain. Immediately after movement resolves, destroy all blocking terrain moved through. And then he has a special attack power, his last three clicks, that is still standing. Free. Make a close attack. So the thing that makes this guy really good is not only, I mean, he's got your leadership, your perplex, uh, but he's got a ton of longevity in his dial. So for 100 points, he's got two clicks of impervious with four damage and then uh, 18 defense, four damage. And then he goes to a three damage, but he retains an invulnerability click for clicks. Um, technically, it's not uh, clicks three, four, and five, but it'd be his on his 100 point dial. It'd be his third click through his fifth click. Uh, he gets invulnerability with a 17 defense and then on clicks uh his last two clicks he gets flurry with a 10 and 11 attack and of course he has traded steel energy but he also has that free make a close attack so you can do a free attack potentially use steel energy on that and then you can activate flurry if you are still on one of those clicks to get three full attacks in one turn uh, the only other character I know of that can do three attacks in a, um, it's the robot, the three-armed Doom. Oh, yeah, Doom. Doom. And then, of course, Eddie Guerrero, who has uh, the three amigos. Um, but, yeah, this this is one of those. He predated both of those guys, um, where like, he came quite a bit before. I think there's actually a couple. There's, like, an Ultron that does it, too. But, anyhow, this guy, Yeah, he's, a, he's an uncommon... 100 points he's got your leadership he can follow up attack i wouldn't lead with him into battle but uh he's definitely if your opponent gets double actioned and this guy's within range you can charge in uh quake steel energy free make a close attack if you get down dial um and then you've still got your leadership perplex to take tokens all right next up i have a another 100 so this guy uh is from ai I think uh, it's a rare because the yeah the the numbering system in AI was thrown off like XDPS because of the colossals. So this is Drax number zero two nine in AI hundred points starts with charge super strength with a nine speed ten attack eighteen defense with invincible and then three damage with his special this incarnation's a bit brain damaged power which is very hmm. nice. Um, if you didn't know, Drax has had uh, several, I guess, reincarnations, incarnations, whichever you want to call it. Uh, okay. He does have a special trait. Uh, several characters in AI had this. He has the power gem, chooses its bearer. Free, this turn, modify either attack plus two, damage plus two, or both plus one, which is just oh. RCE or... A little, little old school RCE. Expert. Yeah. Combat uh, expert, yeah. Or close combat expert, either way. Uh, when Drax is KO'd by an opponent's attack, choose a friendly character for the rest of the game. That character can use free this turn, either modify attack or damage plus one. So not only does this Drax potentially have a 12 for three or a 10 for five, or you can pick up an object and be a 12 for four, or however you want to cut it. Not only does he have that, he also has flight. And when he, when or if he is KO'd, um, he also can pass on a plus one attack or damage to a friendly character, which is really nice. Uh, his bottom dial has shape change plasticity, so he can tie up characters if he gets knocked to that. And then his battle fury ensures that uh, he's being used as a taxi because he's a flyer, but he also will get around opposing. And then rounding out the team, um, I'll go with Bizarro Police from Elseworlds. So for 50 points, he gives you the PD team ability, but I don't think, I think almost no one on this team has range, so that doesn't really matter. But he does have uh, charge yeah, and flight. Yeah, I'm loving the synergy already. <laughs> he has charge and flight, so he's going to be one of your taxis as well for 50 points. And he's got super strength with a 10 for 3 top dial. And then on clicks 2 through 4, he's got close combat expert, so he's going to be an 11 for 3, a 10 for 3, and yeah, another 10 for three. Uh, his defense values are really low. So he's got 15s and then his last click, he's got a 14, but he has a special defense power that is bizarro DNA degradation. 
Bizarro Police takes a maximum of one damage from attacks. When Bizarro Police is hit with an attack, and his defense value is equal to the attacker's attack total, KO Bizarro Police. This power can't be countered or ignored, so Pulse Wave doesn't work, and a good old outwit. Um, mm. But this guy is just a 50-point tie-up piece that is going to most likely, because of that really low defense, take your opponent uh, four swings to take care of. Doesn't have any reducers, but yeah, it's just really solid. And then a way to give all of these characters a little bit more longevity, and I think a kind of busted character in this specific format is the Wonder Woman number 025 Ferdinand who has power, choose an adjacent mm. char- friendly character, roll a d6, heal that character equal to half the result. That works really well with Bizarro Police, um, works really well with Maestro and Drax. Hulk most likely will be dead by the time that Ferdinand can get in to do that, but still really solid uh in addition to that ferdinand has the wonder woman team ability he has a 10 speed charge with a 10 attack for three damage top dial a nine speed charge with a nine attack for two damage on click two he goes to sidestep blades with close combat expert so he'll be a 10 for two with blades uh sidestep and super senses on his last two clicks so on his last two clicks he's a 50 50 rollout just a really, really solid character, in my opinion. Um, obviously, this is a character that a lot of people have kind of known. Uh, being able to power action and heal somebody a D6 without it being support or regen is pretty solid. But oh, yeah. uh, he's also, I think, I'm not positive, but I think he's the only healer in silver. Uh, if not, he's probably. And then, last but not least. This is gonna be, this is gonna be the, the value corner. This is gonna be the cream of the crop for this team. Really, like pulls this team together. Not, not like in an amazing way, but uh, okay. It's definitely gonna be one of the better figures. So, so Calder, this character has four range with two lightning bolts. Oh, you were gonna count out the Bizarro Police's PD team ability. Well, guess what? Four Ooh, range, two lightning bad. bolts. My wow! Bad. Wow! Amazing. Uh, this character has traded stealth, um, mm. charge with smoke, super okay. senses top dial, okay. three damage without wit, improved movement ignores elevated terrain, and then a trait mm. where when this character would be KO'd, both players roll 2d6. If the result of your roll is higher than your opponent's, you may instead replace this character with another character from the same set on an orange starting line with one action. Uh, and then I'll tell you what the other character has. But on click two, this character has leap climb with a 10 attack, 17 defense with combat reflexes, and two damage with close combat experts. So it's more of an 11 for two. And then hmm. same on uh, click three, slightly lower defense. And then on click four, you get that outwit back with willpower. And then click five is also willpower, close combat expert, leap climb. Uh, but yeah, four range, two targets means uh, you can dual target close combat. Um, pretty awesome. The character that this one can turn into on the orange click line has flurry with an 11 attack for three damage, a 16 defense with combat reflexes, uh, three clicks. It's a three click long dial. So the second click would be stealth blades. 15 defense with combat reflexes, 2 damage without wit, and then the last click is a 7 speed with stealth, 9 attack with blades, 16 defense with willpower, and 2 damage without wit. Mm, Okay. I I guess I I don't know why I'm uh, I'm, I'm supposed to have you guess the the price you would think this is. The price. Yes, so granted this is a silver age piece so it's not going to be okay. as expensive as a modern piece but i'm not going to tell you i'm not going to tell you exactly who it is until you guess All right it sounds for whatever reason sounds a little a little close to to a certain figure i i, I think i think i'm i maybe might know who this is um it is silver which means it's not normally worth much more however we're going to count the price of both figures you need or is this just the 
Just the one. Ooh, I was only counting the one, but let me. Okay, just the one. Okay, both. okay, because I couldn't remember if who this person turned into if they were a rare or not. I I honestly can't remember at all. Um, <coughs> but for just the one, I think I think it's Dial. There's no way it's a rare or a super rare. Uh, like the leap climb, comma reflexes, like the outwit, the willpower. Like there's no, like it's got charge. Um. And you know, uh, did you say traded stealth? Pretty good. Yes, yes. Pretty good. Um, but I don't think mm, I don't think that's I don't think that's a super rare or or a chase or anything like that. I think it's gonna be like a common or uncommon. Uh, I, mean, I guess it could be a starter set figure. So with with the thought that it's maybe a starter set figure, I'll say this is like let's do a lot though. That not dying. Ah, you know, that night dying actually might make it two dollars. All right. Yeah, that you not wanna, dying. You want to know what the, me. the name of the figure is? Yeah, I do. I really do. I want to know what your guess is first. What if you have an actual uh, like any is so the not dying makes me think it's like the corrupt GCPD cop, but that's so okay. not what their dial no, would no, be. No. Like, I know that's definitely not their dial at all, but I can't think of. Or so, the Batman from Elseworlds is my guess. Yeah, there's, there he, are a couple like the Dick Grayson Batman very that similar sort of has this. a not die. Okay. With like a, a don't die and the same key, kind of keywords. This is actually yeah. Joker's Wild number 027 Robin. Don't oh, know I was close the with the Batman related stuff. But yes, it is. Yeah, it is Gotham City Robin. martial artist. Surprisingly, brute keyword, no Batman family keyword. Oh, wow, Jason's uh, a real brute, this kid. But I guess. yeah, this is this is Jason okay. Todd, and this is the, of course the one that turns into the Red Hood, which might that might be a hint as to why no uh, Batman family. But yeah, one to nine hundred, so, yeah. live or die is the name of the trait. Um, oh right, yeah. The huh. the Red Hood that he turns into is also a uncommon, I believe. Um, it is, I guess, yeah. yeah it and, is. yeah, so the yeah. top dial, it's a running shot precision strike uh, shape change energy shield, but bottom dial, it's a close combat kind of beast. And you would hopefully already close the gap with this Robin. Be next to somebody, before, yeah. yeah. Before I think that with happens. stealth and charge. Should be pretty simple. Plausible, yeah. yeah. Um, stealth, I mean, no improved movement hindering. So at the time when this figure was made, not as good as it is now. Surprisingly, yeah, it's true. Also, that, no that top lie. dial. So like, this figure's actually gotten a pretty decent boost in the last uh, update of rules. But uh, yeah, this this Robin brings one thing to the team that they were really sorely lacking, and that's uh, good old outwit. Um, for for all of that that I mentioned. Uh, not including Jason Todd, but or not including uh, Red Hood. Red Hood, but, yeah. Uh, for just this Robin, you can pick it up on CoolStuffInc.com for forty-two cents. Um, oh, ooh, forty-two! Interesting, interesting. However, the Red Hood is out of stock, so the the cheapest uh, one I can find is on e four bucks, which is four dollars for an quite, uncommon. Quite crazy. Ooh. Uh, ooh. Because honestly, you don't even really need the Red Hood. Uh, it's a good stalling tactic. It's a good way to uh, keep your opponent from scoring this Robin, uh, and it's a fun mechanic. But yeah, with uh, Robin combined with uh, Ferdinand, hopefully you're not getting KO'd, and hopefully he's like staying in stealth and using his out his his smoke cloud uh, punchy punch charge and kind of stuff. But yeah. Uh, of course, Batman ally. I I said it was traded stealth, which it basically. But uh, yeah, that's essentially yeah. He's a that's the four hundred point team. Red Hood is the same amount of points as Robin. So if you do switch, and then your opponent KOs Red Hood, it's the same amount of points as if they KO'd Robin. So you don't Man. get out of you don't get out of any kind of score. At a at seventy points, sure was different back in the day, huh? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it really wow. was. Yeah, Joker's Wild. Was All right, a man. Pretty crazy set. I dig it though. I dig it. I dig the team. Nice, man. Okay, sweet. 
Uh, so, all right, that was that was our generic gallery. That was our team building. Let's go ahead and jump into some listener questions. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Fine, folks, over on Discord. Of course, if you want to join the Discord, you can go ahead and join the Dial H for Hero Clicks Patreon. For the month of August only, we will be having the Do You Even Clicks poster handed out to all $10 and above patrons. So if you want a Do You Even Clicks poster, now's your time to get it. Now's your only time, the only chance. People that have already been supporting the show, it's a little extra. You guys, bit of an incentive to go check it out. And of course, be part of our, our pretty fun, pretty awesome uh, Discord community we have for our patrons. Uh, I really enjoy it. We play Bad Samaritan some Sundays before we record the show. Not this week, obviously. Um, and then... Yeah, I'm going to start doing some Battle Royales uh, for people that have Tabletop Simulator. Quite a few of our patrons actually do, which is awesome. So I'm going to try to start doing Battle Royales here soon where I can get a, a good schedule. Obviously, organizing four people is a little tough sometimes. But yeah, if you want to support the show, get entered to win all sorts of cool raffles this month. I'm going to be giving away a lot of Rise and Fall stuff because I don't want any of it. It's gross garbage set IMO. So that'll be all our giveaways this month. So in a little bit, just a little bit of an incentive to join the uh, the Patreon there. Link in the description below. And, of course, that helps Simi and I uh, make all sorts of cool content, make our podcast sound better, uh, all sorts of cool things. Um, you know, and after seeing uh, Simeon's desk saga from cardboard boxes <laughs> to what it is now, Simeon needs a desk, guys. I don't know how to say it. We got to get him that desk. I might just make a new I stretch goal for Patreon. I yeah, you do. Have ha- you technically have a desk, but that's like saying I technically have life insurance. Technically, I'm like, uh, <laughs> all right. The okay. general is technically <laughs> car insurance. Yes, technically, it's car technically, insurance. technically. Uh, but all right, guys, we got <laughs> we have some great. We can find it online. Go to the general and save some. Anyways, uh, you can go ahead. Uh, we're gonna do some our questions for the show. From first one is Luke Luke. Is why is the Outsiders still a team ability? I personally offended by this question. I love the Outsiders team ability. I think it's awesome. I have love to love it agree. a lot. Sadly, I have to agree with Calder because man, the outside. So the Outsiders as characters, not the greatest characters we get. The team no. ability slaps though. Like that team ability, uh, it's essentially it's the it's the weird world trait. Um, it's like with like more steps, but yeah, it just you pick a opposing or friendly character. You you pick a character and you lock their combat values at their displayed values. Prior to uh, flight, or prior to just prior to the changes of carrying somebody, you could use this on like a green lantern mm-hmm. and then have them carry eight characters with no modifier to them, and that was like huge. You got an extra three whole squares. That was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, additionally, like, you know, it, it nerfs energy shield, combat reflexes, anything that would, like, if you've got combat expert, close combat expert, range combat expert, anything like that, uh, power gem outsiders just is like, nope, you have no modifiers and that's really fun. It's really good. I love it. Absolutely love the team ability. However, yeah, um, we should make it do something else and then give somebody who's, like, way cooler that same team ability. And then his real question <laughs> is if Marvel and DC had to change all of the team abilities to be more gen- universe agnostic name and symbol in the same way that Power Cosmic and Contestants became Cosmic Energy, what should they become? And why is Outsiders the garbage can fire emoji? Once again, amazing team ability, not an amazing team. I don't get Luke's yeah. hatred for Outsiders. I'm sad that we don't aren't, aren't gelling on this, but I, I freaking love yeah. that team ability. To be fair, the team, no, I never read we, an Outsiders comic. Do not get enough Outsider. Like the team ability is almost as rare as like it's, Hyper Time. Oh yeah. Uh, I was going to say Serpent Society, honestly. We almost, I can't remember ability? the last. Is Serpent Society a team? It used ability? to be. It used oh, to be. Okay. Serpent Society and Morlocks used to be team ability, yeah. Wow. I guess, I guess Outsiders, we had Rebirth Outsiders, didn't we? Yeah. Um, uh, Outlaws. That was two or three Outlaws of them. Had Artemis, it. Yeah. Bizarro, who was a super rare prime. Red Hood. Red Hood. Yeah. Uh, and was that it? Those three? Uh, Starfire was also an Outlaw, but she didn't get it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uncopyable. Those are so the, yeah. no, uh, no swappies. Nope. Um, yeah. So, 
the bulk of the question is uh, how would we, like, what what team abilities would we combine and make into a generic kind of symbol and name? So, right off the bat, because I'm going to go in kind of order, Batman Ally grants stealth. Marvel does not have a, a team ability that grants stealth. It's very strange, but it does not. There's no strange. Marvel version of that, which is weird because we got the espionage trait, which granted a whole heck of a lot of stuff. Um, and it's weird because <laughs> according to WizKids, we have two Marvel abilities that allow you to see through hindering, but no Marvel ability that gives you stealth. So we have a yeah. double up on being able to see through hindering, but uh, no no stealth power. Uh, what kind of symbol I would want to see? So if if we weren't combining it, I'd say like some sort of uh, what do they call like the I guess the Marvel Knights symbol would be a really good one for stealth. Yeah, Marvel um, Knights. Yeah. If we were going to combine it. I think some sort of like cloak and like hood or uh, like a noir kind of like hat and hood kind of like uh, or hat and like cloak kind of thing. Um, cloak and dagger kind of stuff, I guess, is the easiest yeah. way to say that. Some sort of image that really symbolizes that, like the stealthy rogue kind of nature of the character. Um Marvel characters that it would make sense to get this. Of course, everyone that's gotten the espionage trait, like, you know, if they're a spy, it makes sense. Um, there's more people than just Batman allies in DC that are stealthy. And so, like, clearly, I mean, they're usually just given stealth, but the team ability is really fun because then you can give them a normal speed power, like sidestep or running shot is better than brood uh, stealth. Okay, right on. I think I was actually that was my first pick as well was Batman slash Marvel Knights uh, for stealth because I think you know we don't see a lot of Marvel Knights but I think there's enough edgy Marvel characters that we could indeed uh, put them on something you know yeah. oh interesting and anyways more like uh, characters that like I, unravel the darkness I kind think of thing. because they are very much people that would be um, in kind of in cities. And sort of in back alleys and stuff like that. I, I was thinking we make the new team symbol a brick wall, and then we could call it something like oh, I don't know, like boys that are in like the back streets, you know, like the something like that. You know, I I can't think of anything super catchy, but that's uh, that's sort of where I'm, I wish I was. Where I'm I wish right I was now. in sync with. Yeah, no, not quite. We'll get to that uh, one later. Know, not running a fever. I'm the normal. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's 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 all <laughs> no, that's all I, I have. Get, like I could I get behind that. Like, a street level uh kind of like name if they are like yeah. you know whatever. If they if it was I mean clearly they're not going to classify Batman as like street level. But I mean he yeah. is technically does, he like, does fight you know, bad guys hand to hand kind of thing. He is. Yeah, he's street level. I would consider him a street level character even though Justice League whatever can bump him up. Uh, I think he's fairly, fairly street level, old, old Bruce here. Um, uh, did you have any any other ones, Simeon? Oh, uh, off the top of my head, yeah. I mean, you could think uh, of yeah, the ones to combine JSA Without powers and, combined. So there was no Marvel version of Batman Ally, but um, there is one. Yeah, let's go with instead of. Uh, I was going to say JSA and uh, Defenders, but, but instead of that, let's go with Calculator, because I think Calculator actually catches Calculator, and um, I think they've already got one for this, actually. This is the new the questions of uh, oh, yes. team player now, um, which is Spider-Man, which is uh, Spider-Man calculator and team player are all the same thing free choose a team ability that a friendly character can use that isn't uncopyable this character can use the chosen team ability until you choose again i would like to see spider-man team ability get changed to the wonder woman team ability which i'm fine with wonder woman team ability being oh this. yes i like uh, that as but well. i think spider-man team ability would make more sense 
way more sense than Wonder Woman ally team ability having this. And that's super senses, but only succeeds on a six. If the character can already use super senses, instead it increases the result of its role by su of super senses by plus one. This would make several uh, Spider-Man family characters really good. Um, some of them like way too good. Uh, it'd be a like only fail on a one to two or only on a, like a one in some cases kind of thing. And that's pretty bad. But uh, I think overall when Spider-Man's like main defense that he usually gets is super senses, this is a huge boost. Also, it just makes way more sense than trying to sneak Amazons onto a Spider-Man family team so that he can have access. It should just be the Spider-Man team ability. Like it should. It really should. Because yeah. you know, even on the off chance for the few characters that aren't a spider senses person that have it, I could still see them getting away with having super senses on a six. I mean heck, if Steve Trevor can have super senses on a four through six and he's just yeah. like regular dude guy, regular, I think we can yeah, give, you know, we can give yeah, we can get black cat senses on a six, you know, like I feel like that's very fitting for most of the spider related yeah. characters that Frog we get Man to see. Senses on oh, a oh six. yeah. Please. Bouncing around. Please do. Absolutely. Um, as far as symbol goes, I really like the, the like the spider sense uh, symbols from comics, like the like kind of lightning bolts around a head. So if you did like a generic yeah person's head with like little like ah i'm aware kind of like uh metal gear solid like giant that'd be fine with me um uh, i can't think of like a super good one because it's you know it's, it's essentially somebody that's like really dodgy so it's hard to make an image for that but you, you could have like some sort of close combat like you know, just really dodgy kind of like picture image person thing i don't know I can't think of something yeah. off the top of my head. really fit that, but I really like the the Spider Man dodge image. Um, but yeah, um, and so back to the what started this calculator, and with that we already have team player. Um, I think the the calculator team ability would actually be better suited to be like a either Masters of Evil team ability because the new Masters of Evil team ability, instead of being Colossal Stamina, is now when an adjacent friendly character makes a close attack, modify the target's defense minus one if the target is adjacent to this character. That seems more calculated, more of a calculator kind of ability. Uh, like I've outsmarted you, I've lowered your defense kind of thing. And I don't think that DC has a comparable lower adjacent defense ability yet. So I think if Calculator became that, and this is like more yeah. like the reason why I'm explaining why I want like this power to be this and that and blah, 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 is because retroactively these powers that get changed, these team abilities that get changed affect golden age character get like the they don't get printed generic universal ones so characters older characters with cos po ah, cosmic power power cosmic and uh quintessence now have cosmic but if there's a change to cosmic energy it won't technically affect power cosmic or cosmic energy it's it's weird i don't know I don't know. That's why I, okay. I, I feel like it's necessary to specify what changes would be made to the power so that uh, Golden Age characters would get the... Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I think uh, another power I think should be changed more on the Marvel side, though, is I really like the Suicide Squad team ability. And we don't get to see it a lot, which is when somebody dies, you roll a d6, um, and they can heal. I think it's minus two, so it's minimum one. But it's I think that's really cool. And I think we should change Hydra to that. I know they have their whole horde mentality with okay. their police team ability, but the whole um, if one dies, two more shall take its place. So like if a Hydra person dies, you heal up a different Hydra person. I like that a lot more for Hydra. And I feel like that's a real like spit in the face, you know, um, when 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 you finally heal something and somebody else gets to heal, it really feels like, like ah, man, I can't believe you you took that. So maybe we could call it like take that or something like that. I don't know what 
would be a great name uh, for that team ability. I do will have to say that the Superman, the Ultimates, and the Avengers Initiative, with the, which only now grants sees through hindering terrain, um, it shows a fairly coordinated team effort. And I think since you're just kind of like shooting pretty straight uh, in basically one one direction, I think maybe some kind of arrow and maybe calling that the one direction team ability could be pretty good. Uh, and then to kind of move on, uh, I think X-Men and then Teen Titans, very similar, both their healing style. Of course, one being teens uh, is more more made up of boys, and then X-Men are are men. <laughs> so oh, I think like, like maybe... Boys, two men. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you see what I'm going with no, here? I, yeah. I thought you were going to say it <laughs> smells like teen spirit. Because, no. Uh, oh. This whole segment is starting to smell... Like <laughs> something called. <laughs> well, we're not <laughs> we're not over yet. Oh yeah. Um, oh, you, you've course, got more. Okay, yeah, yeah. I've got more. Yeah, this is this is what I decided to do with my time. Uh, Injustice League and Brotherhood, of course, um, bad guys. Uh, but they have to roll real high to get the use of it. And you know, a lot of these cities in Marvel <laughs> and DC are. You know, anyways, so I called them the Bay City Rollers. Uh, oh, and sure, then we yeah, move yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Avengers and Justice League, a very coordinated team, the plus one to speed. And, of course, they are the most coordinated out of any team in their universes. They definitely act the most in sync uh, than any Marvel or DC <sighs> team. Uh, all right, this is the last, this is the last and, one. And this then the last Hypertime. One. Uh, um, oops, Calder did it again. No, oh, yeah. Um, oh, I thought we were go. just gonna continue with like early two thousands no. references. Okay. No, okay. We, no. We I've got. I've got, got, got one more. One? Yeah, one more. Uh, and then of course, Batman enemy and Spider Man enemy. Same team ability, replacing attack values. Right. Uh, yeah. Exact same team ability. Uh, they beat on people a lot. <laughs> The bad guys, uh, and then you know, Spider Man and Batman have a lot of animal and insect related characters, so I think sure. I'd call them okay. the Beatles. Is what uh, I went with, okay? Yeah, 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 to take it, you know, a different Cause direction. They beat because <laughs> the they, because they, yes. they beat, yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, that All right. I'm done. This is what oh I got. man, what I um, uh, I. I don't even know how yeah. how to be this disappointed. This is I've reached a new low. Uh, we did you, did you cover the Titans and the X Men? Is that what is that what? Because that's the same team. Of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. at this point, I just hope Kingdom come and take me away from here. <laughs> uh, Aha! Got him. Aha! I did one. Very good. I did one of them. Did it. Uh, hey, hey, that's pretty good. I really hope uh, we can hyper time this and Calder can't uh, become adjacent to me. Darn. Um, I'm, I'm come adjacent. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, look at that. Look at how sly that was. Really good question. Really good set of questions. Uh, I honestly, this is something. So this is something when uh, we first started making generic team abilities, and that being like team player underworld. When underworld finally got changed to like the brass knuckles instead of like the domino mask, and uh, when cosmic energy got switched, I was like, yes, it'd be really cool if indie properties could share powers and like whatever. If everyone could share certain powers, and we had these team abilities that shared all these things and we didn't have to update, you know, similar to how the Kaiju from Pacific Rim still have old school mystics technically because hey. their version of mystics never got updated. Um, why they didn't just give them mystics. I don't know. I guess it's because they're hung up on the name and they're like, well, Kaiju's not mystic. It's like, hey. you're correct, but, um, you're alien mystic. Yeah. Whatever. But like, the team ability worked the same as old school mystics did and now right. uh it's better so strange and getting updated yeah it's very strange i'd like it to be mm. all mm. all the same uh and then yeah um 
Snowfall, it's hilarious because even it's, under universal team abilities, Snowfall is the same as the same as Spider Man Family. Or it's also the Jazz. Which, yeah, yeah, it is. It's so, just, and then ah, Snowfall could be way cooler too, you know? So but I think we've, we've talked quite a lot about team abilities. So let's talk about some more team abilities, shall we? Hypertime Jackson says if all the other Lantern cores, other than Green Lantern, had a team ability. What do you think they would be or what do you want them to be this is obviously a lot uh i'm gonna just answer one of them um and that's gonna be red my favorite lantern core besides you know the default green or whatever so instead of making it like poison penetrating poisons so that's something they already kind of have and the green lantern core doesn't give them willpower it just makes them all taxis you know it's a very kind of when you think about it lame like it's good yes but is it kind of lame for the Green Lantern Corps saying all he does is taxi people? Yes. Um, so Red Lantern Corps is if closer to an opponent's starting area than your own, modify attack and damage plus one. I think that fits the Red Lanterns. You want to play offensively with them. I think that works. So yeah, that's what uh, that's what I'm going with. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so similarly, I did uh, for Sinestro Corps. Because they're entirely fear based, I kind of went with the opposite of like Gladiator's confidence thing. So as your opponent loses confidence, they also like lose power. So for the Sinestro core, it would be whenever like a friendly character with Sinestro core team ability hits, opposing characters within six squares modify attack and defense by minus one. So Okay. Maybe like that. too good, but I I think it's, it's like pretty good. That's pretty good. It, it might be like within three, or maybe it's just the one that was hit. I'm not exactly sure. Like the the best version of it, but uh, or the most balanced version of it. But I I think it'd be really cool if uh, you demoralize your like enemy with the Sinestro core, and I think that'd be way better than the negative one perplex. The negative one perplex was like kind of thematic, kind of worked. But I think it's better if you don't even worry about perplexing them and you just like hit them and then take away their willpower kind of thing. You know, yeah. you you scare them into submission kind of sit I like that. I do like that. It is good though. It's re it is real good. It's real good. All right. Uh El Presidente asks, What are some things in media that normally wouldn't be listened to but you actually enjoy? Uh, so I'm going to talk about something that I just never liked for the longest time, and I'll, I'll keep it short. Um, but then I found out there are some variations of this that I do enjoy, and that is rap music. I I don't I don't like a lot of rap music, but there's a select couple songs that I do enjoy. Some some songs by like Kanye West, couple DMX songs, you know, the more well known ones. Uh, like, uh, you know, I like number one by Nelly or Jesus Walks. Um, X going to give it to you. Stuff like that I enjoy. Some of the rap where it's like I can't understand it. I'm not so much. Calder's not a fan of you know, the cops. A fan? He's like, yeah, I listen to the ill mind. Not a fan. Uh, yeah. He has no idea what I'm talking about. No, I've got People who zero clue. Sorry. Or, or who yeah, is. no idea. But who like, as on. you know, like I'm, I'm more of a, uh, you know more of a country music guy yeah a, more mostly a boot, scoot kind of rap scoot, boogie. uh actually uh wild wild west i recently listened to that is sort of a a country uh, definitely more of a rap style hip-hop song i uh mr, S old, mr. william smith good old will uh, smith and yeah good old will smith dj jazzy jeff Oh, no idea. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, no clue. Um, but it came on the radio like a few weeks ago, and I was like, really? oh, this is awesome. Or a few months ago, and I was like, oh, this is, wow. Okay. Yeah, and it was on the country station, too. And I was like, what in the world is this? And I added it to, like, my, you know, one of my playlists. I was like, oh, dope. I enjoyed it. Wow, wow, Wes. And, like, I, Desperado. Like, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good song. Um, but, yeah, like, normally, and most people wouldn't take me for a rap person, because <clears throat> I'm normally not. But th there are a few rap songs that I do enjoy. I mean, what is the piece of media that wouldn't be something you normally are into, but you really do actually you were enjoy? Be like, man, this little dicky guy slaps, and he's got a TV show called "Hi, I'm Dave" or whatever the name of the show. Oh is. no, I can't stand that guy. My brother actually really <laughs> likes him, um, but he's just too weird. Like, it's just like he doesn't sing about 
It seems about weird stuff. Which is yeah, just yeah. Weird. Like it's just, he's ugh, like it's odd. Went into Subway, got mail. Like, my sandwich. Well, no, I meant like he has like the one like about like a brain and some other ones that are just like kind of like not. They're just strange. It's like uh I see why they don't like it when certain people rap. I get it now. You know, like <laughs> unless it's Eminem, maybe don't. No. I I don't know. I think he's got a he's got a uh, different theme. But he's got like good flow. Uh, yeah. Um, Guy, he does have a different theme. I'll but uh, I'm that. going in a completely direct, different direction because uh, when it comes to media, so like, he means he's talking about how much he loves country music. Music Can't wise, wait. I listen to pretty much everything. Like I hit every genre. I've got like, I've got Mongolian throat singing. I've got uh, a lot of bands I can't uh, pronounce. Uh, 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 yeah. Like some Gogol Bordello. I've got. Like generic country, uh, like not. I shouldn't say generic country because honestly, the one thing I don't listen to is modern, like pop country. I listen to like Waylon and Willie and uh, Johnny and like that kind of stuff. That's good. It's it's like my my favorite kind of country. I'll listen to yeah, um, yeah like Merle Haggard, uh, but I'll listen to like some like '90s country. I just don't get into like the the two thousands the like my big green tractor like do really? do not care I do not I care all of it honestly that you except once for sat like, on a tractor and then yeah. and then sang about it and made a bunch of money and then never once worked on yeah. a farm in your life I do not care about that I'm glad that you conned a bunch of people into thinking that's who you are but uh, while you like sit in your like mansion that's more expensive than their entire acreage i hope you like realize that you're just like a con man with like a nice voice uh whoever whoever i may be speaking to um but i do not i do not care for pop country i cared i like country where there's like actual soul in the voice you know like Wayland did I get actually... you off? Did I get you off on a tangent, or is that the thing you enjoy? I'm sorry. No, I'm no. Sorry if I caught <laughs> this. I'm just going yeah. into like music now. Um, oh, okay. But other than that, like I, I don't mind. Uh, yeah, like some, like I listen to like pretty much everything. Um, but no. Uh, so the question was, what are some things in media that normally wouldn't be something that you're into, but you actually enjoy? Um, so my answer is very different. Um, cooking shows. So there's a few cooking shows. Now I didn't care for like hell's kitchen and kitchen nightmares and like some other, uh, random like cooking kind of things, but, uh, nailed it. I've actually enjoyed cause they funny, take funny. somewhat like untalented people. I don't know. Sometimes I think they just lie about like how bad they are. They're like, I'm really bad. And then they like pop out some really good stuff. Oh, right. They're like, are you though? Um, but yeah, like those kind of cooking shows, uh, some like the team bake offs and stuff. I don't really care for baking shows as much as like actual cooking shows because I'm not a big sweets person. So when I watch them dump like a ton of like cream and sugar and stuff, and but when I see them like reduce a nice a nice red sauce down to like uh, add their their protein stuff into it whatever i don't know i was going to pretend like i knew what i was talking about but i i do not but it it looks like good food and then as i'm sitting there eating my hamburger helper i feel real real cool i can pretend yeah well i think you're a pretty good cook to be fair like it wasn't the uh, most complicated dish in the world <laughs> So I've been to places that uh, yes. burn them. So. My, my pretty good uh, eggs. Pretty good eggs. As uh, as they have been not come to call, be called, yes. Yeah. Uh, not the not the hardest dish in the world to make, but yes. No? Yeah, all right. Uh, so next up, what do we have here? Ah, Alex. He, he says, uh, so Alex, uh, we're going to have to put a limit on how many times you can mention Magic the Gathering. Uh, it's getting on. Um, it's up to yeah. here. Yeah, per month, the per month capita to mentioning magic is really it's taking the wind out of my sails. I, I cannot stand magic. Anyways, in Commander, 
a casual format for, yeah, you guessed it, Magic. It is common etiquette to, and now, first of all, he says etiquette for Magic players, which I didn't think they had, so that's already interesting. Uh, second, uh, he goes on to say, uh, rate how powerful your deck is on a scale of 1 through 10, so that people can choose a similar power level decks to play against each other. Factors for this includes how quickly it can win the game, how consistent that is, and how good it is at stopping others from winning the game. What metrics could Heroclix players use to do the same thing? Obviously, stuff like support, lethality, whatever. And he fair, has a 300 modern example. I think uh, yeah. most competitive Magic players would rate their decks at like a 10 out of 10. Well, right. Like, so. Like, a Lucas uh, Van Hollen would be like, yeah, I've got a 10 out of 10 deck. Why would I show up to a tournament deck. with anything not? You know, like, wouldn't. Wouldn't everybody that came to a 300 Modern or a Nationals type tournament, wouldn't they all rate their team like 10 out of 10? Wouldn't they think that's what they are playing is the best thing? But clearly, yeah, otherwise you wouldn't some be better than others. Or, worlds, yeah, exactly, for right? Sure. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. So for more of like the, the casual kind of format, so I don't like a huge scale. I feel like 1 to 10 is too big of a scale I agree. If you were doing a specifically casual format, I get that Commander's got more going on than just being casual. It's like kind of like what Heroclix Golden Age would be and kind of some other random factors that we don't really have uh, comparable things in Heroclix for that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, but I, I would prefer, if you're sp strictly speaking, like casual Heroclix... Uh, like you're trying to make it fun, you're not trying to be competitive. Because if you're trying to be competitive, it should always be the highest. Like you should always be rating your deck at the highest, your team at the highest. Um, if you're trying to have fun, I think a one through five would be a much better scale. Where uh, me and Calder talked kind of like before the show. A like a one would pretty much be like a honor unsynergistic kind of thrown together maybe it's a theme team maybe not uh it doesn't really do anything it's like hey i really wanted to slam these figures against your figures and see if like my big numbers beat your big numbers it's kind of just like a right i haven't played these figures before i don't know if they'll work i didn't bother checking to see if i have any support powers or any leadership or anything um like literally just kind of like a toss together team and you you're gonna you're gonna rate it a one. Uh, I can't think of a time where I would rate anything a one other than that because if I'm not having some kind of fun, then my opponent's probably not gonna have some kind of fun either. Um, and to be honest, like I'm having fun if I'm rating it a one. It's just like it might right. end up being a two, and I did not know. But you know that's you know. Uh yeah, I feel that. I and also really quickly, like it doesn't quite the way he formatted the question doesn't work for Hero Clicks because I can't bring multiple teams to my venue. Unlike Magic, it's like four inch by four inch deck box thing or whatever, you know, like whatever three inch by two inch deck box. I guess then you can bring a million of those or whatever, right, to a Magic tournament. So it's like, oh, you're playing this. Well, I can play this or whatever. Um, but if we wanted to say like, hey guys, for this. Uh, events this week we're gonna try to do some tier three or whatever level teams and th then it would work for sure um at, at, of our one through five scale um but alex's team right like it's like superman and it's mazo so yeah it's like a two because it's just sort of like thrown together like sure it is so you have like a lot of stop clicks first of all he gets a lot of negative points for for putting a Superman in the Discord. Um, but, you know, like, it's got a lot of stop clicks, which, yeah, sure, yeah. it's got some good survivability. And, of course, like a Mazo at 125 is a little hard to take out. But even then, in a 300-point game, you only have two attackers who I well, can't remember if Mazo can get TK or not. You have no good reach. It's all, like, charge and whatever. Like I'm assuming, so uh, I guess I'm not, I'm not assuming anything. But <coughs> at the same time, I'm kind of assuming this Amazo has sideline pieces, which makes okay. a big difference. Um, if, right, yeah. If we're just playing, playing Amazo, and he's just going to copy Superman's powers, then you have, like, 175-point Superman, 125-point Superman, essentially. I guess Amazo can also copy opposing character powers. 
Um, yeah. So like there, there is that kind of play in there, but uh, if he, if there's no like the none of the sideline or none of the uh, team up card kind of like play, then yeah, I think uh, this would be like not necessarily a one, but definitely like a two. This isn't something that you're trying to like break into like any kind of like competitive thing. You're just trying to play this team for this specific effect. Uh, I've played teams similar to this where it'll be. And by that, I just mean it's, like, extremely simplistic because, you know, like, when I used to run Wednesday nights, Thursday nights, and go on, like, Sunday nights, and by run, I mean, like, play, uh, when I used to, like, run to venues three nights a week, uh, sometimes I'd have, like, a build where they'd be, like, bring DC without flyers, and I'd just hit, like, DC, boot symbol on HC Realms, and I'd, like, search... And whatever came up first, I was like, all right, I've got this, I've got that. That's the right amount of points, and that's what I'd take because I just straight up did not have time to build for three different right. venues, three, like, you know, unique builds every week. So, like, I would just pick and choose. Sometimes I would forget, and I'd have to just kind of grab whatever I had and make it work. And this kind of reminds me of, like, some of the stuff where I've I've done that. I've been like, uh, like, it has something going on. I'll figure it out when I get there. And so, yeah, I'd rate this at, like, a two because it's definitely not just a team that does nothing. It's no, like, pushover team. Like, no. it's got good reducers. It's got good sticking around power. And but I'm you, just saying, like, as far as attacking and stuff goes, like, there's – is it a theme team? Is it? Like, do they have two prob, I guess? Like, not – there's not much. Right. And, yeah, like, I, that's the thing yeah. is, like – could this be played competitively? Could you, um, like, duck, dodge, and dive and keep your opponent from scoring a Mezo the whole game and, like, kind of, like, ruin, like, their their ability to get points from you? Probably. Like, you, you could probably make it into a pretty solid um, damage-reducing team. Uh, Superman's yeah. got the ability to like boom tube away and stuff like that so like you can you can make it into a very hard to take down kind of team uh which is fine but like i mean it just depends entirely on how you're going to play it because uh the other option is you just like have superman and amazo like slam into your other characters and just try and deal as much damage as possible and so I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, I think a two is solid because um, in what I it's, would it's rate two, a three. At the very least, it's good. To, it's two good figures, right? It's very, if it was like yeah, a hodgepodge team figures. of like bad figures, then that would be like a one. Right. Like, yeah. heck, even like a team that's just like is just kind of a bad team. Like if you made like a Serpent Society team or whatever, if they don't have the the firepower to even like yeah contend. if you made a, a serpent like, society like team you know without um like the good like without like the big carry guy or without right. like uh their, their big attackers like instead you just had like i back black mamba yeah rattler you know like if you if didn't use a, any like serpent good ones, society with no sidewinder yeah no sidewinder i'm gonna be no like, like what, what or any of the heavy hitters like You'd be like, oh, this is, this yeah. is pretty whack, bro. Um, yeah. But what I think makes like a, uh, what I would say like a three out of five team is you've got like something that's got like really solid synergy. You've got all the powers that you need for the team because not every team needs every uh, support power. Um, you don't always need like a perplex or a prob or whatever, depending on the team. But you've got all the powers that the team really needs. And it's something where, as a three out of five, you're gonna lose almost every time you take it to a WKO. But yeah, you're gonna be able to take down stuff like a 175 point Superman, like a probably uh, Superman Prime, like convention exclusive. Any, I think a a three out of five team casually should be able to beat a 300 point. Like, not sorry. Not a three hundred point, a three hundred point character. I think a three hundred point 
three out of five casual teams should be able to beat okay. a 300 point single character um almost like not not necessarily 10 out of 10 times but almost always right but it, you're saying it should be opinion. able to like out act like action economy whatever else should be right. able to take that should be able to between one, outwits yeah, one perplexes, uh stat modifiers and just like yeah like leadership like all that kind of stuff if age of ultron hulk can defeat your 300 point team i think it's a two out of five and that's not trying to be mean or anything i just think casually speaking age of ultron hulk has gone quite a bit down yeah it's gone yeah no i agree Um, stats are still really big but again like he doesn't have that crazy reach he's literally just on the team by himself so like once your team's got like a a tk with like a big heavy hitter pen side damage kind of like thing or like a big outwit alpha strike kind of thing then you start getting into like the three out of fives and the four out of fives um i think if if it your alpha striking it's probably closer to four out of five but uh i think a three out of five like i've seen great lakes avengers take down an age of ultron hulk with a well-built like age of, or with a well-built uh great lakes avengers team so i know it can be done it just you know just has to be the right kind of like mentality and build and synergy yeah no i think so yeah uh Oh, Great Lakes Avengers is still real rough, you know. But I think if you're like using like the Deadpool, the Hawkeye, like whatever, all that stuff, you know. You. Yeah, I'd say you're right. That's um, I mean, like I agree pretty much with everything like that. You know, like a five is you know, Etal, Min Max, Full Map, three hundred Modern, what we would consider competitive, right? One is like, you know, random BS, not any real synergy, just kind of like, oh man, I like Kyle Rayner the flash and <laughs> right. whatever, you know, and it's like just slapping them on a team. Um, and then, yeah, like two, it's a team. It's got a little more guts. Maybe it's got some decent reducers. Maybe you sort of had an idea of what's going on there, but it's missing like good reach, good synergy, you know, and then three, you got like TK, you got some perplex, got some prob, you know, it's not the full like stop. Like some people seem to think you need support TK out with, Prob perplex. I think it's a bit overkill. Even for modern teams, you don't necessarily need all those powers. Um, then yeah, like um, and then like one through ten, obviously, like we boiled down this like one through five system pretty well. Yeah, I think one through ten would be a little rough, even though it seems to be uh you know not like a, the good old uh Netflix one out of five stars, the old school YouTube one out of five star rating. So I think the one through five is pretty pretty solid. Um I also did want to say that it is just a little more useful in a you know one through whatever rating is just better than casual, casual, competitive, and then competitive. Cause people have different definitions for all that stuff. Um, and he says, because my definition of a six might vary from your definition of a six. And I agree. I've seen what Sim- Simeon calls a seven. And I'm like, whoa, I wouldn't go anywhere near that seven, bro. That's a five for me. But, you know, these Nebraska sevens are different than our South Dakota sevens. And, you know, we all have different standards for things. So it hey, totally makes sense, Alex. I see what all you- he did was ask if you were here for the concert. That's true, but no, uh, no reason to say that he's not a seven felt, because of that. Hey, wow. man, I just the kind of people you meet out of Runza in Nebraska. Is you know what the wow. weirder it's, part of that? That Garth Brooks Bruce concert Bruce. was in Lincoln. I didn't realize. Was that it really? Today. That was like sixty-five minutes away, and he what in had the, the world? audacity to assume that on Center Street at Runza we were going to a concert. Almost like an hour away. In Nebraska? Yeah. Wow, that man really just assumed. Wow. I see like, this is the disrespect I get when I go down to Nebraska. Disrespect. Like wow. at first wow. I was like, maybe, maybe it's like down the street or like only a wow. you know, couple blocks away or but no, literally a different city. And he was like, Oh, you got like one of those for that. People, what else like, would you, you know, be doing? At a fast food like, that's restaurant the thing they're on a going to, you know? <laughs> yeah. What in the world? And he's probably not even from Nebraska. He probably came from no. out of town. He's sort of like, he oh, yeah, I bet everybody. The There's no he was there for the was. concert. Yeah, you yeah. sort of like sort of assume that everybody else is kind of there for the thing you're there for. Yeah. No? Like, I got his number. Like, all I know, I know some people like that. What the heck he was thinking. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. 
Anyway, anyways, uh, Ren Runza though, I'd say uh, <laughs> it's a four out of five. You know, it wasn't like crazy blow me away, no, but no, I was no. surprised with how good this it was. Isn't gourmet food, you know? but it's good not gourmet, fast. but it's it's pretty good fast. Yeah, it's good food fast. Is that the, is that their tagline? Did you just work Runza no, tagline into this, the, or is that okay? I don't think that's their tagline. I have no idea. That's definitely a fast food chain's tagline, though. Oh, I did not come up oh, with that. Oh, probably. Own. It's definitely somewhere. It was good though. Somewhere. Yeah, uh, all right. It's not well, fast food. it's I good food think fast. That was. That might be a Sonic angle. It sounds like something that Sonic would do. Anyways, uh, I think we good good tangent. I think we figured out our our hero clicks team ratings. I hope that answers your question, Alex. Uh, <laughs> yes. Our last one here uh, from old Bill says, "I don't know if this has been answered." But is the Batman set 00033 Bad Samaritan the inspiration for the Bad Sam show segment? We haven't done Bad Sam on the show in a while. We need to guess to do Bad Sam. Uh, and yes, it is, Bill. So a little bit of podcast history for everybody listening. Dial H for Hero Clicks was not always Simeon and I. <gasps> yes, gasp. Shocker, I know. Uh, in the beginning, in the beginning, uh, it was Austin, Rue, and Hunter. And a little ways into their show, they came up with a fun Hero Clicks segment idea called Nothing at the time. It was just our Hero Clicks guessing game, which is exactly like Bad Sam we have today, where you try to guess a modern age figure based on the clues. We haven't changed it that much from its original form. Um, and basically, a lot of uh, fans like wrote in what they thought the name of the thing should be called. But when one episode, Austin chose the Bad Samaritan from the Batman set, and they were like, well, no one freaking ever knew who Bad Samaritan was, and they kind of got mad at him for choosing a figure that was so incredibly obscure, they ended up calling it Bad Samaritan. So that's sort of how it got its name. There's, I don't remember what episodes they were where it was like first introduced and everything, but... Uh, yeah, like it, it actually kind of was fun uh, listening to the show back then and like seeing them work through it in real time, you know, and especially if you want to go back now and be like, oh, that's how the name got it. But I sadly uh, do not know what episodes those were exactly. And it would kind of be a lot of work to figure out which ones they were. I might, I don't know, I might, I might do it by the end. Yeah, that'd be a lot of listening. Um, but yeah, so there are a few episodes where they sort of go through the creation of the game and ask people to name it and all that jazz. Um, so yeah. To be fair, uh, that is how we got it. If you know like the story of like the Good Samaritan, Bad Samaritan, also just makes sense in that con like context. It does. Like you're you're trying to like so. kind of like handicap some. Um, <laughs> wow. Simeon is like two for two this week on interesting metaphors he's used. <laughs> interesting. All is right. that not a good met I, I don't know. I thought that was I, Yeah, that's pretty good. No, okay. no, I think it's a, that's the right <laughs> comparison, I guess. Is that maybe it's more of a comparison for things, but uh yeah, pretty I mean both your comparisons there, have yeah. been Oh, there you go. Very good. That's another one people probably don't even know is a segment anymore. They have, like, no idea. As you see, guys, uh, with last week and then this week, we are trying to use more of our segments because sometimes we don't get to do them a lot. And I think this made this episode a little more of a timeless episode, not necessarily totally talking about the news or anything, but instead going into a generic keyword. And though, although, yes, uh, Highlander, or not Highlander, excuse me, Modern and Silver will be changing with the time. I do think this is not so much a, oh, I didn't listen to this the week it came out. There's no reason to listen to Scott Porter preview episode or like whatever the exact week it comes out or like these previews because they're old news, you know. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you do enjoy episodes like this, uh, write into the show. Let us know. Same thing if you want to ask us questions. You don't have to join our Patreon, although we gladly appreciate it. You can send us questions on our Facebook or our email at dialhforheroclicks at gmail.com, all spelt out. Same thing with our Twitter is dialhforheroclicks, but it's a four. Uh, but before I end the show, we do have a Jedi Legend Hero Clicks tip of the week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. Jedi Legend, uh, of course, sporting the uh, good Hulk Hogan uh, Hero Clicks. Uh, profile image on Twitter here is saying here who's tip of the week damage value and damage dealt are related but not the same thing incapacitate and mind control are attacks that deal no damage so if you roll a crit hit it still won't deal any damage however uh, I believe incap has a modifier now 
So you don't have to in cap when you make an attack. That's a choice you get to make. So if you were originally planning on in capping somebody, but you roll a crit hit, you know, you're like, oh, you know, maybe I just, maybe I'll just crit hit you instead. You know, uh, he does say on the plus side, a super senses is a guaranteed hit, so they can't use super senses. So yes, you do choose to go with mind control or incapacitate. Uh, they can't use super senses, and they also can't mastermind it because they become hit, uh, which is pretty cool. So I, I quite like crit hits they sure are great same thing if you quake uh it deals damage everybody plus one so everybody takes three instead of two uh same thing if you multi-target somebody if you have four damage to give you can deal them each two and they'll take uh you know three each type of deal which is kind of cool with multi-target but yeah hey crit hits crit hits are just you know what can i say about them everybody loves them unless they're being rolled against you sounds about right yeah 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 i'll agree i guess I suppose if I have to, but yeah, that is that's what I got for the show. Hang Very on. cool, Simeon. I'm just read out. I'm just read getting out. a good segue. Yeah, he's he's like, man, he's trying to think of a segue. He's going all the way back to Paul Blart times, trying to think of a friggin' segue right now. Yeah, nothing. And he's got nothing. I'll, and if I don't know if I can give him some leaders. And you want some <laughs> some thing? You can find some stuff at coolstuffing.com. They've got cool stuff in stock every day, including the latest Heroclix sealed and singles products. Uh, they'll be getting that X-Men Rise and Fall set any day now. Most likely uh, Wednesday, because today's Monday in a, we're, that we're recording this. Um, so yeah, by Wednesday, most likely, the singles will be on there. And you can still order the uh, bricks and cases. They still have some of those in stocks, so... If that interests you, go ahead and pop on over there and use code DIAL5 to get 5% off of your order. Like always, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the 100? Instant deadpan humor. Over oh, okay. six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, back some more. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. 